In July 2011, crowds descended on the farm of Paul Thurley in Downpatrick, County Down for the IGA Beef Tour. At that time, Paul was farming 180 acres part-time, running a 90-cow Angus suckler herd, bringing both heifers and steers through to beef. As part of the 2020 IGA Beef event, we revisited Paul to see what has changed in the intervening years and what direction the farm will take in the future. Um, so what, what we've really done is we have, uh, we're, geographically we're in a place where there wasn't a lot of competition from the dairy, dairy herd for land. So as the profile of, of uh, farmers got older, we got the opportunity to take land. So you know, we'll have about a, a 400, 410 acre base of land now, which is well up from what it was. The basic principles of what we do today haven't changed much from where, from where we were. Uh, they're predominantly a half British Friesian, a half Aberdeen Angus cow. And these here are all uh, topped with an Aberdeen Angus uh, sire, so terminal Aberdeen Angus sire. With the milky cow, we have an expectation the Angus will be about, you know, 340, 50, 60 kilos. Last year they averaged 335 across males and females, um, at you know, about 10 months old at that stage. Now, h historically, or since we've got the, the better silage, we can do 0 0.7, 0 0.8 kilos over the winter time. Um, so that leaves you have got a, an animal 460-ish kilos going to the grass in February. Um, you know, he's whenever he's 600, 610 kilos, as far as we're concerned, it's time, it's, it's time to go. Um, our average for the last couple of years has been about 17 to 17 and a half months in age. Angus are roughly half, uh, ha um, 50 percent R and 50 percent O's. So, we're, and it's an R minus really rather than an O plus. And uh, we had a, a, an Angus calf to beef uh, enterprise for three or four years which worked really well, we were delighted with it. In fact, at one point we would have almost decreased the cow numbers to increase that. Uh, but then when the difference, in the, when everybody else started doing it and the calf price started going up, we found that the, you know, the calf price became, you know, just affected the economics of, the, of that job uh, too, too severely. Um, but uh, these are the type of things, whenever sit stills, we're always trying to do something a bit better or a bit different. It's grass for as long as we possibly can graze, and then it's keel and silage uh, in the winter time. The keel and silage things was present all those years ago and it hasn't changed much. But another very significant change to the whole farming uh, uh, thing is, is the way we handle our grass. The whole farm, right to every last field, is now paddocked out in some form or other. So that meant infrastructure with water, fences, and that type of thing. So we can now uh, you know, graze far more efficiently than we did in the past. But the stocking rate gone up then, we had to up the ante the amount of grass we grow, so we pay a lot more attention then to actually grazing or to growing more grass. In this part of the world we're moisture restricted, so we're probably, what we've learned is that, you know, 12 tonnes to the hectare is going to be almost a max. Uh, drought brings that back to seven or eight. Uh, 2018, one example, this year already, we're down three, three, three and a half tonne of dry matter per hectare so we'll have to watch carefully with our stocking rate because there's only a certain level we can go because of our outwintering system we'll have a limitation to how many how much stock we'll have uh, at that stage but we usually average around two livestock units per hectare uh, you know right, right across the board um, the first obvious thing we saw when we started doing the paddock thing is that with a surplus grass the, the other thing is is the quality of our silage because all the time we were very anti-feeding meal here. We're working with an Angus animal, which is easy finished and all the rest, but they can't do it on their own. Uh, the milky cow gave us an advantage with the size of our calf, and uh, the Achilles heel to the system was getting a consistent growth rates over the winter time without any concentrates. And the, the solution to that problem, and it took us four or five years to get there, was to up the ante of the quality of the silage. It's an all bale system, all double wrapped, and it's all cut at the right time, and we're you know with the hit, we're hitting silage now of 17, 18 percent protein and 12 me, and uh, you know so it's this very very high quality silage, and that allows the calves then to go through their their winter time with keel and silage, and still manage to do 0.8 kilos a day without without meal. As as the grass base grew, we just tried to grow the the limitation was growing the cows. Um, and the cost of being able to up the ante. Uh, this year we've calved down a, 150 in the spring and another 40 in the autumn time. So there's 100 and, 190 to calve down this spring or this, this year 
and uh, we're projecting to do uh, about 220 for next year, mm -hmm. probably heading to 250. Mm -hmm. Quite happy with the expansion. We had to learn how to how to deal with bigger numbers in the way through. Uh, obviously, we're still a very tight uh, calving pattern. We we calve the last three years in a row. We've calved everything inside 60 days, um, which gives you a, a, you know that gives you a fair bit of a rush thing in February. But once February's over, the back of it's broken. Uh, we'll have a system in place where we can manage and monitor pretty well. Uh, cows, calves, more left by themselves. That takes a lot of pressure off. Grass is available in the field, so you know that's they go straight from uh, the keel to calving and then into the field. Uh, they're in grass. All, all calves are on grass between the 24 hours old. Um, Frank is the youngest son, uh, mad about farming all his life. Um, he did what any parent would do and try to encourage him to do something else. Uh, he finally spat the dummy out about when he was about 19, 19 or 20, and he's been home ever since. And to be quite honest, we, we were growing the herd and managing it all sort of part time. I was still working at that stage, right up to 140. And you know the pressure, the pressure point at that time was definitely labour. So it was he was a very welcome addition. And uh, the only one condition I made for him when he came home is he had a he had a had to learn about grass, learn how to use it. So he is the main man for the grass, and he's taken that role very seriously, and he's done very well with it. More recently, I've home full time this last 18 months and we find we can comfortably manage most things with the two of us and don't see any issue about expanding with just the two labour units right up to 250 cows. The traditional system was, was cows put to the bulls, let them do all the work. It was, it was very much a focus on low labour. Uh, we decided we were going to have to try, we we're going to try a few wagus. Uh, so the wagyu was only available as AI straws. So we started experimenting with that. Going forward we're probably if, we can, if and whenever we can get a few Wagyu bulls, we'll probably back off the AI and go back to a bull system, purely from a labour point of view and an efficiency point of view. The Wagyu thing, it, it almost seemed like a natural step. It wasn't that big a step to go to the Wagyu, because as more Angus became available, obviously there'd be a price pressure on the Angus, the Angus premium. So we said, right, we'll try a few Wagyus. The first ones are really killed. Taste tests have been done. Everybody's really delighted with them. Peddled it about the place and have managed to find ourselves a, a, a market. So now we're at the stage where the guys, they're more than happy with the product. So we are gonna to have to up the ante now and produce a few more, uh, which we're quite happy to do. So it's really driven about, we just want to be producing, you know, the best beef there is. And uh, the system's good, you know, and the people, people relate to the system and the grass fed system and, and that type of thing. So, you know, the perception to the public is very, very good as well. All, all, all waggers are going, are going through the beef. Uh, the marbling is where the magic happens. So the deal that we've done is, is for marble score only. So they're, you know, their, their confirmation is terrible. They're all old graders. Uh, their growth rate is, let's say 20% less than what people would be used to. And marbling needs time to mature in the animal. So it's really a 24, 25 month system maybe more. The first of them were 30 months before they were killed. Um, the first batch killed, the heifers, 31 months, and the average 369 kilos, and the males were 31 and a half months, a month older, and they were 432. The, the learning process has been very, very steep. Uh, we now know, you know, we're clear in our own head what, 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 what we're doing, and we've realized that we can actually short circuit a lot of the meal feeding because of the quality of the grass. So we hope to, you know, when it all settles down into a system, we hope it'll be a win-win.